guess plus one here. And today let's talk about my 3.19 Explosive Arrow Ballista Elementalist update. Now 3.19 has brought some changes that uh, need to be addressed for the Explosive Arrow Ballista build to further function. Now that being said, I'm not going to do a full new build guide for 3.19. And that's simply because I think it would be a waste of everybody's time. My 3.18 guide is totally fine with a few adjustments. And those adjustments I'm going to talk about in this video. Other than that, my 3.18 guides are still totally fine. So if you've never heard of this build before, uh, I will link you down in the description, the 3.18 guide. I also made a full leveling guide where I go through uh, all the way from level one to level 70. Starting off with the elephant in the room, and that is the explosive arrow nerf. Now, no one, I want to say that compared to some of the other high tier builds from last league, for example, Seismic Trap or Skellies, we actually got away pretty damn well. Not as well as Nightblade builds, but still pretty damn well. So number one, explosive arrow got nerfed here. Now there has been a, quite a bit of confusion what this actually means. So the multiplier of explosions deal 5% more damage with hits and ailments per explosive arrow on target has been removed from 5% to 3%. Now what that means is basically if we do the math here, this is a damage nerf obviously. So on full fuses, which everybody's talking about, uh, now everybody who's played this build knows that full fuses actually happens very, very little. Even in, in bossing, it doesn't always happen. You're not always having the perfect conditions. So this is not even in invitations, this really happens. This happens against stuff like Cyrus or like Eater of Worlds. Basically all the enemies that aren't uh, actively moving all the time. So what happened here is in 3.18, you basically, if we take a base damage here of a 100, it doesn't matter what that number is. Let's just say baseline 100 to make it easy, times 2.0. And that is because when you have 20 fuses on an enemy, five times 20 is 100% more damage. So times two is 200 damage. Whereas in 3.19, this got shrunk to 3%, which comes out at 20 to 60% more damage. So 100 times 1.6, we go down to 160 damage. So overall against these bosses, scenarios where you have full fuses up you do 20 percent less damage but in a leak start scenario the most important thing believe it or not is actually mapping scenarios because you're going to be mostly mapping and i have an example here with six fuses so basically while you're waltzing for a map you're not going to put down all your totems all the time you're not going to have everything up so if we look at 3.18 we have 100 times 1.30 with six fuses five times six 30 percent more damage we have 130 damage and in 3.19 if we have uh six times three that's 18 percent more damage we go to 118 and in this case it's only nine percent less damage now, if you still think this is a big deal uh basically in january this was in 3.16 still we were leak start testing for 3.17 and we basically went through everything in the game with this build we were so enamored we knew it would be buffed which is just insane uh, but we already did it pre-buff and back then what you have to understand is this line did not exist at all there just was no more damage for ailments it was only for hits so what you got to understand is basically uh will you feel the change not really will it matter against single target kinda um because you have to stay alive a little bit longer until the enemy dies but will you still be able to clear everything yes now something i do want to point out though in terms of damage nerfs is you have to think about the meta as well if there is less people who play yay there's also going to be less people who buy the gear and stuff like for example at aedian dawn is going to be a lot more affordable stuff like porcupine cards to get a six link way more affordable now, obviously your very ceiling at the top is going to be a little bit lower but for most people that's not going to be a problem because they're going to get to their power spikes earlier and that is the most important thing getting to a comfy level of your build at least in my opinion uh, so overall this could actually be an opportunity for people who have never tried out the build um, i've heard so many people say ea is dead or whatever that there's actually a good chance that you can pick these up uh, for pretty damn cheap next up let's talk about spell suppression so there was a defense overhaul where basically they wanted to make it so that you cannot just simply itemize into spell suppression and get 100 percent they actually want you to take some on your passive trait. So what they did is remove the amount of spell suppress you can get on gear. For example, this used to be like 30-ish and now it's like 18. And instead they increased a lot of the stuff on the passive trait. Well, we're basically in luck because for us, that's not that big of a deal. It's mostly a big of a deal for like melee builds who are in this region or spell casters who are in this region. But since we do dip into uh, the ranger side of things were mostly good. So number one thing we're going to do for this patch is we're actually going to spec into reflexes and mage bane. Some people already did this before because their gear wasn't very good, but now we can just do it on the passive free. So mage bane will give you like 10% spell suppression at the cost of a little bit of evasion. And then this note here got buffed. Reflexes is still the same, 10%. 
this little note got buffed. Um, now for builds who were cutting this part, it's going to get a lot harder because this note here got actually buffed to 10% from six and this one got buffed from five to eight. So that's a very good compensation, but don't worry, we can still get to 100%. This is like on the decent gear, on the better gear, we're actually overcapped. So you do not have to ever go up here or any shenanigans like that. Also, I updated and adjusted the amounts of spell suppression you can get akin to what the patch notes are saying. Uh, basically, in the decent gear, we have like around T2, T3 spell suppression, whereas in the great gear, we have tier one. Then we have something that doesn't just affect us, but basically globally, everybody loses their divine blessing, which is kind of annoying. This was basically a free aura for us. It was wrath. Uh, now, basically, it got removed. Nobody can use it anymore. It is what it is. It's kind of unfortunate. I didn't really love the playstyle of losing half of your HP anyways that much. I'm not going to miss it all that much anyways now what to do with our gem slots though because now we have four slots open well since i didn't really get the time to test out ea ballista unfortunately this league uh, i kind of just put down a little bit of suggestions of things that i was thinking about back in 3.18 but that were never really possible to implement number one would be uh, you can put a cast of damage taken on molten shell we uh, basically used to just do molten shell on a left click uh, but sometimes it wasn't up at the right times which could be annoying with cast of damage taken this is going to be a lot easier and now you have an extra slot for that uh, next up we can use our second six link right um, so for example you on your frenzy you can now six link your frenzy or five link your frenzy whatever you want you can put stuff like culling strike or life gain on hit if you uh, feel like it. Now, something you can also do if you want to stay more true to the bow playstyle instead of using flame dash, you can go blink arrow, faster projectiles, and faster attacks. I really think this is necessary to make the it smooth enough, right, to give you another uh, movement skill. This is just very, very smooth. Um, if you have the sockets, why not? Uh, Lightning Golub is also something that a lot of people were already using. I always found it a little bit annoying to activate, but um, I talked about it in the old video, I think, as well. Um, you get a little bit of attack speed whenever you remember to press it. Good enough, right? You can also use a cry, whether that's Enduring Cry or Infernal Cry. Enduring gives you a little bit better survivability, whereas Infernal gives you fancy explosions as well as um, some covered in ash on enemies. And when it comes to interesting new uh, or redesigned uniques, uh, the only thing I could really see that was interesting is Cloak of Flame. Now, uh, this one has been reworked to now give 40% of physical damage taken as fire damage. Before it was 20% with hits, so that means dots are also included. So if you don't know how this mod works, basically what happens is uh, now that you take 40% of physical damage as fire, that will mean that you take it against resistances. So you have 75 resistances, so 40 times 0.75. So 30% of the damage you take as physical damage, it just evaporates. Now, this is a huge defensive boon alone, but on top of that, you also get 50 to 75 fire resistance, which can be very nice, uh, makes your gearing a lot easier. And then you also get 40 to 75 ig increased ignite duration on enemies, which means that whenever you have a high roll on an ignite, that will stick for longer, as well as that your proliferations will be way longer. So your clear will be way more consistent. Overall, I will say this, I think while having this on, it's going to be a little tricky to get your spell suppression up. Um, cause even with this, we're, uh, hardly at a hundred percent, right? With this one, we're at 95 with the great gear. We're at a hundred. If you were to cut the lamellar, you would have to go for 17%, uh, spell suppression somewhere else, right? Which would be pretty rough. You would have to probably do something like this, but maybe then you could cut this. So I don't know if you want to indulge in this, definitely check it out. Maybe you can make it work. Overall, I will not be doing this because I think a lot of moving parts would have to be changed for this to be viable. But overall, if you want to try out one of the new uniques, this is the one. But overall, what are my thoughts for EA for 3.19? Uh, number one, the bar for what an S tier leak starter is has been considerably lowered because of the seismic trap and the skelly nerf. Like if you think EA got nerfed, then holy moly, you should probably look at the patch notes. Some of the these have been absolutely demolished. And even stuff like seismic after even harsher nerfs is still kind of playable. That just gets to show you how crazy some of these builds were. So I actually agree overall with the EA nerf nerf i think it was a, a pretty decent nerf uh overall the bar is way lower uh, other than nightblade builds everybody lost a lot which then in turn means that everybody has a harder time at the game but um in relation to each other ea is still extremely strong now the suppression nerfs have been really hard 
to circumvent for a lot of builds. For us, it isn't. We actually had a ton of spell suppress on the way that we just didn't take because we got so much on the gear, right? So now we can just take reflexes, we can take mage bane, and it is done. And that is huge. I've seen some builds that actually have to path awkwardly to one of these clusters. We don't have to do that. That's great. Overall, I don't think the damage nerfs are significant enough at all. Um, in mapping, you won't even feel a thing. Um, I think that overall, the harshest nerf for EA would have been if they just uh, cut the base damage like they did with Seismic Trap. But the multiplier with fusings, it wasn't as bad as I actually thought it would be. I thought they would completely destroy EA, which I'm really happy about that this is still a playable build and overall if there's less players which i'm going to predict there will be there's new skills um there's new stuff to try out so it's going to be less people into this you can get your power spikes earlier like for example daedian dawn or your porcupines with that being said i'm going to put all the resources from 3.18 down in the description the uh leveling the end game the build guide itself um so yeah i'm going to adjust all the pobs so there is the new uh, spell suppression values in here and nobody gets baited by anything right um everything should be fine if you see anything that i forgot i cut the mono reservation efficiency as well right so i cut the fiance banner stuff like that if you see anything that's like off definitely tell me if you still decide to play ea i will be playing something else this league i'll put it out soon but uh so far i think if you want a very safe choice uh, especially for something like solo Sephon, i would definitely go for this the leak starter I'm about to release is a lot more risky because it has some of the new uniques, which means we're kind of at the whim of GGG balancing. Um, but overall, if you choose to play EA, I hope you have a ton of fun and uh, see ya. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, honestly, I think EA is one of the best choices this leak still. Um, I don't want to say it out loud because then more people are going to play it and my prediction is wrong. I just need to play something new. I played this two times in a row. I need to kind of spread my wings and fly, play something um, with some of the new uniques. Overall, if you've never played EA before, this is the perfect time for it. I can just tell you that. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time. <laughs>